Good morning. It's me again, Casey Durango of Gokita with Casey. Hopefully this will go better than the previous one did. Don't know what the problem was. I'm sure it was my, my problem. But uh, for those of you who attempted to see a little earlier video about the coming holidays and end of year issues that we might encounter, um, thank you for hanging in there. Please let me know that you can see and hear me, that I'm not freezing up. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey! Hey, 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 I hope this is better. Okay, good. Thank you so much for letting me know. Now, I don't know whether you could hear me before, um, so I'm going to repeat myself just a little bit. First of all, I want to acknowledge over the last two or three weeks I've been traveling a lot uh, between the East Coast and the Pacific Northwest, a couple of uh, events, and Really, the most wonderful thing is meeting people face to face and hearing their stories, amazing stories, everything from people who've come off fast medications to have lost a lot of weight that have re entered their lives, all the way to Marie from Seattle, whom I had the privilege of meeting with her son. She's 93 and gave up sugar at age 90. She takes no medications right now. So if you think you're too set in your ways, think about Marie. Anyway, as we go into the holidays, and I will be repeating myself just a little bit, sometimes we just give ourselves, frankly, the excuse to say, well, it's the holidays. And the Halloween candy is right there. And people bring it into the office, so I had to eat it. Well, of course we know that that's not true. That's like... A wayward spouse saying well there was a convention I was in Las Vegas and there were all these available people I had to have an affair no of course not not that having an affair and eating you know Reese's butter peanut butter cups is the same thing but you know what I mean we have more control than we sometimes want to admit easier to say I'm just powerless over the candy than to actually exercise our power over the candy. Same thing with pumpkin pie and red velvet cake and sweet potato casserole with marshmallows on top. Just because it's been a family tradition does not mean it's obligatory. Your family, if your family, either your family of origin or your family of choice or your family of friends, is only held together by whether you eat the food that they prepare, you don't have that much of a relationship, I hate to tell you. How about instead of concentrating what's on the table as you all gather, concentrate on who's around the table, the people, the conversation. And again, if it's too scary to think about having an actual conversation with somebody without food as the buffer, you might want to examine your relationships I know, this is heavy stuff, right? But if we've been heavy stuff, <laughs> and every January 2nd, we look back and say, oh, I can't believe I ate all of that food, and that you're like in a food coma from October 31st until January 2nd. How about we not do that to ourselves? And how about we not use an excuse? And I'm sorry to use that word, but it is an excuse. And I've done it. Nearly everyone's done it. Holidays are stressful, so why don't I eat? Oh, my in-laws are coming. I think I'll eat. Well, because, of course, the food solves the issues with your in-laws, right? It solves them immediately. No, of course not. All you're doing is kicking the issue down the road. Stress eating. I guess it's a thing. I know I've done it, but it's illogical. The eating does not fix whatever you're stressed out about. And holidays are stressful times, can be. So let's enter this with an idea that we don't eat Halloween candy. Everyone else might. No judgments. But we don't eat Halloween candy. We don't eat pumpkin pie. We don't eat sweet potato casserole with marshmallows on top. 
We don't eat Reese's peanut butter cups. We don't eat Aunt Ida's pecan pie. Aunt Ida will deal with it. Again, Aunt Ida's probably seen more in life than somebody turning down a piece of pie. You can be gracious, but you owe it to yourself to not put things in your mouth that will make you feel unwell, that are counter to your own self-interest. And frankly, it's time we get a grip and stop making excuses because there are excuses every single day of the week. Every single day of the year, there's an excuse, an explanation, a reason, you know? Ooh, I've got a stressful job. Yes, job stress, very difficult. Ooh, I have an unfulfilled relationship with my partner. Oh, my kids are driving me crazy. Mm. I'm upside down on my mortgage. All of these things are not enhanced by food. As a matter of fact, when we stress eat, we put more stress on ourselves. So let's, let's pre-arb ourselves for the, the approaching end of the year and realize that food is not the boss of us. My best-selling t-shirt, food is not the boss of me. I probably need to order some more. By the way, I've got a few of these Go Keto with Casey t-shirts in. I'm almost sold out. And there are Go Keto with Casey mugs. They're really cute. You don't have to buy anything, though, to be 100% successful with the ketogenic diet. For those of you who don't know, the ketogenic diet is one in which you reduce your carbohydrate intake to a level where your liver does not push out glucose for fuel and your body happily switches to burning fat or ketones for fuel. That's all it is. It's not the amount of fat in your diet that gets you to that state. It's the absence of carbs. You don't have to drink, eat, buy, put in pill form, put in shake form, put in powder form, exogenous ketones of any sort for nutritional ketosis. It's not the presence of what you put in your mouth. It's the absence of the carbs. So keep your carbs for most people, 20 grams total, not net, per day or fewer. Eat the foods that are on the food list, which you can find at my blog, caseydurango.com. It's one page. It's just foods, it's essentially fatty sources of protein, a bit of dairy if you can tolerate it, eggs, and some nice added fats, but they're limited to a you know, couple of tablespoons of mayo or sour cream or whatever. Heavy cream, limited, two tablespoons a day. And don't eat if you're not hungry. There's the diet. And probably you're not gonna be hungry if you follow this like you have been before. Brain hunger is different than actual hunger. And let's remind us ourselves of this. If you are actually, truly empty and hungry, don't go for the red velvet cake. That's not what you need. Go for a pork chop, boiled egg, deviled eggs, steak, chicken thigh with the skin, buffalo if you like it, bacon wrapped scallops, red velvet cake is not what you want to eat if you're actually truly hungry. So. How about this? Don't stress out about it. And if you can't think, oh, for the next three months, I'm going to avoid carbs. Don't look at it that way. Say, today I'm avoiding carbs. Today. And I don't eat Halloween candy. Repeat that out loud to yourself. I don't eat Halloween candy. You say it enough, you start to believe it. I don't eat carbs. I don't eat if I'm not hungry. For me, I have to say I don't eat peanuts because I really like peanuts, but I don't eat peanuts. I don't eat if I'm not hungry. Say it to yourself. You're in charge. A craving is not a life emergency. 
And guess what? Food does not actually call out your name. We laugh and joke about it. It really doesn't do that. It's not a thing. You're stronger than an inanimate object. Okay. Now, <laughs> I will now quickly turn to um, comments and then I'm going to sign off because I'm going to give a plug for Patreon.com. Most of my content is for patrons. $2 a month and up gets you varying levels of content, but contact with each other, as I've said, I believe patrons don't necessarily contribute to get access to me, but rather to get access to each other. If you go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Gokita with Casey, you can see, and I make about 20 videos a month for patrons only, and you get access to the patron only form. And, uh, and then I'm, in about seven minutes, I'm doing a patron only video group chat. I love those. Okay, Sharon Preston writes, I don't drink alcohol. Same thing. There you go. I don't drink alcohol. It's, you don't even have to have a conversation with yourself about it, do you? I don't drink alcohol. Remember your goal of good health. Focus on that. Remind yourselves that where you are or were is too painful to stay there. Yes. Really? Is candy corn more important than getting your A1C down? Forget about, maybe your blood markers are good. Maybe you just don't feel well. Maybe you've put on weight that you don't like having on you. Loads of people are perfectly happy inside their bodies. I am all about body positivity. I simply was not a person that was happy inside that body. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, I just shared a screen. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. I was not happy inside that body. And um, that was not fun. And that was not even close to my heaviest. And that was me. I'm in the blue, the summer of the triathlon. I was laughing, but I wasn't happy. Okay? More power to people who embrace themselves and love every inch of themselves. I didn't. And if you're someone who doesn't right now, give this a go. Give this a try. If you're doing it, stick with it. Don't say, well, it's the holiday, so I'm going to let myself do something else. I'm going to let myself do what I know does not feel good to me, but I'm going to do it. Talk to yourself about that logic. I know this is going to make me feel sick, but I'm going to eat it anyway. I know I'm going to blow up like a pufferfish if I have a cheat weekend, but I'm going to do it anyway. You make your decisions based on what's on what you do. No judgment. Just know that you can do this. Give yourself permission to turn down the food, no matter who prepared it. And again, if someone's feelings, if your relationship with a person is hurt because you decline a slice of cake? Let's think about that relationship. That person should be happy for you to pass on the piece of cake. If you are healthier, happier, losing weight that you don't want to have, fitting in clothes that make you feel better about yourself, that person should say, absolutely. More, more for me, but I, I applaud you for passing on the cake. Okay, so let's not give ourselves. Let's not, let's not make excuses for ourselves. We've done that for too long, and it's easy to do. Again, no judgment. But once you get through one holiday, the next one is easier. The next one is easier. And then you get through three or four or five or ten of them, you say, well, this is not even a challenge for me. Birthdays, psh, office retirements, bingo. Wedding anniversaries, what's the deal? Going to a wedding, no problem. I got this because I don't eat carbs. I don't eat cake. I don't eat peanuts. I know one woman who doesn't eat peanut butter.
Okay, I am going, I am actually going to sign off because I'm going to have a video group chat for patrons. And thank you so much. Thank you to the people I met. Thank you to the people who bothered to travel to, uh, you know, to the events at which I was present and particularly for those who attended the Go Keto with Casey Roadshow in Portland, Oregon. I had a blast. I hope the attendees did. And thank you to Peter Ballerstead for speaking. He was a hit. Okay, have a great Saturday. Remember, you can do this. Food is not the boss of you. It's just food. All right? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate you bearing with me with the technology issues. Who knows? Gremlins. And I will hopefully see you next week. TTFN.